guys, it's Michael Levine. I wanted to respond to another bit of viewer or reader email. This one comes from Joe. I'm 44 years old and I wanted to, to make a career change. I'm a respiratory therapist and I'm interested in going to school to become a stylist. I've been researching the industry to see the income potential. I've seen $19,000 to $29,000. I'm assuming he sees that as, as what the reported average income for hairdressers is. I hope I can earn much more than that because I need to cover my monthly expenses. I'm sure it depends on location and salon. I'm definitely a hard worker. I'm excited to start. Any pointers or info? Greatly appreciate it. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay, I don't really know much about St. Petersburg, but I do know about entering the hairdressing industry and becoming successful. That's kind of all I know about, actually. And I've got a gazillion tips throughout my blog, but I'll touch on a couple of, of the key basic ones. First, I want to touch on, um, you've seen this 19000 to 29000 average wage in the industry. Now, if I don't know what the minimum wage is in Florida, but you're going to be making minimum wage for that first year. That's the reality is you will be hard pressed to make more than minimum wage that first year of graduating hairdressing school. But that doesn't mean that, that the 19,000 to 29,000 that you've read as the average age of or average wage of a hairdresser is actually accurate. And I'm going to talk about something and I have no proof of this, but I would guess that because hairdressing is a predominantly cash business and there's a lot of people who who run um, who run salons out of their homes or who work in booth rental salons where they're responsible for collecting their own cash when usually when people are responsible for collecting their own cash they tend to maybe some of that might go straight into the pocket and might not necessarily get reported. I'm not saying anything, but I'm totally saying something. You're gonna have your debt from hair school, and then you're gonna have that first year um, that you know you, you're just building, and it takes a long time to build. So, it it you can you can build quicker, but it's gonna still take time. There's no possible way that first year and possibly two years you're gonna be making more than that twenty nine thousand dollars in within that first two years. It's extremely unlikely maybe for three years and it might even be five years that you're in that that range but you should be doing well above that range within five years the problem is you're 44 years old and do you want to wait until you're 49 or 50 years old before you're able to actually start making you know a decent living and for me i'm saying if you want to do this hopefully you've saved up some money through a better you know a better paying career as a respiratory therapist hopefully you've saved something up in a nest egg and you can afford to to make some sacrifices because you're going to have to make some sacrifices there's a few things we can do to accelerate our growth and i i mean that's, this is all i ever talk about when i do my my seminars and my my videos so i'll just kind of touch on a couple of the key things first of all your age at 44 years old is actually to your advantage i i enroll lots of people in my hairdressing schools who are a little more mature and the advantage that these guys have over the young ones um, generally is they're going to, I don't, I don't want to say, they're, they're going to be a little more well-read generally. So that means they're going to be able to speak and have a little more con, con, command of the English language that I'm stumbling over my words. Maybe a better, bet, the, bit better command of the English language. And clients tend to think that you've been at it longer than you have. And I'm all about lying. I'm all about lying. So when, you know, that for clients sitting in your chair and say, so how long have you been a hairdresser? And you're like, oh, honey, you don't even want to know, <laughs> right? You can be super vague. You can, you don't have to say like, you're my very first client that I've ever done. People will assume because you're going to be more confident in the way you speak. Um, and then there's a couple of other things that you can really, really control that are going to help you. First of all, let's talk about the physical stuff. The physical things that you control right out of the gate, you are not going to be a good hair cutter within two years of doing hair. You, you might be okay two years later from, from hair school. You might be okay and you might start developing your skill set. Um, and you, you'll have to work at it because it's haircutting is a hard thing to do, to really, really grasp. I, I like to think that it takes three years of really immersing yourself in haircutting before 
you are able to bridge the gap between the technical, like the purely technical, as well as the balance and the shape and the, and the form of what you're doing, as well as bridging that into what clients actually want. And that's that's a hard thing. There's a lot of really, really amazing technical hairdressers who don't necessarily create flattering work. So you've got to be able to bridge the gap between those things. And it usually takes about three years to, to master the technical and then also uh, the commercial work, which is really, really crucially important. But the things that you can control right out of the gate, an amazing shampoo, scalp massage. Um, that that is something that you can easily control. You can you can learn that within a week and just developing incredible massage technique when you're shampooing people. That's going to get get you over really, really well. You can immerse yourself in hairdressing culture. Now, this is more of a verbal and mental thing, but fully immerse yourself in the culture and become a total geek of hairdressing. Put, you know, put your life on hold and, you know, don't ever watch TV again and only watch, you know, Ted Gibson videos on YouTube. You need to develop command of the language of a hairdresser. Um, you need to develop the verbiage because you need to be able to talk to people and talk things up. And the more you fully immerse yourself in, in the hairdressing world, the more your eye is going to kind of get into tune with with things and the, with with hair and with shape and with color and all of these things. And you'll find that you'll accelerate things, become a true geek and student of hairdressing, of all aspects of hairdressing, particularly of the hairdressing that you want to do. So you're giving a kick-ass massage and you're able to talk the talk. Now, the more you're able to talk the talk, the more you will kind of start walking the walk. You will be able to do that, but it's going to take a little time, but your finishing skills are something that, again, you can develop really, really quickly. I would not necessarily spend much of my energy in that first year doing more than mastering finishing. So I would take all the finishing classes that you can. Um, I would master shampoos, and I would absolutely not necessarily go in and take a Sassoon cutting course or something like that at this stage. I would develop... Uh, I would start developing mastery of basic techniques that are very, very commercial at this stage because that's going to help get you over. And then and I would get bodies into my chair by luring them in with my verbal approach and the way I dress. So you're going to have to dress really, really well um, and, and really start playing the role of a hairdresser. And I hate saying fake it till you make it because it's, it's a vile term, but start acting like a super successful hairdresser right away. And you'll start to get the bodies into your chair. And because you're a passionate hairdresser and a student of hairdressing, that will actually carry you over quite well um, and allow you to kind of Go a little further than your actual skill set should allow you to. Then in that second year, once you're getting really comfortable with hair and you're able to move it around the way you want to move it, that's when I would start really developing mastery of my hair cutting. I would maybe take a week or two off and go in, take a Sassoon course, uh, or, or just develop some really, really strict regimented technical hair cutting program. Color is something that, um, it's, it's a hard thing with color. I mean, thankfully... Thankfully, what people are wanting right now is not that difficult to achieve. It just takes a little bit of patience. I don't want to downplay that kind of work, but there's a phenomenal amount of, of information on YouTube. I would really, really immerse yourself fully in YouTube University and start working with your color and, and just become that guy. Don't wait to become the guy. Become the guy and everything else will kind of fall into place. If you... Drive your own bus. I, that's what I always say to my team is like, don't don't sit in the back of the bus, jump in the driver's seat and drive your own bus. And you will actually have a much, much better chance of making a living much sooner. And the sooner you're making a living, the more likely you're going to stick with this industry because a lot of people leave this industry because they're not making any money. But ultimately, uh, it's really up to you and how well you do in this industry. I, as I said, I don't know about St. Petersburg, Florida. I don't know what the the demand is for a hairdresser. The number one thing that I would do once you're out of hairdressing school or even when you're in hairdressing school, figure out the salons in your area that are going to help you um, put yourself on the path to success. Find a salon that has a track record, a proven track record for developing talent. And that's where you want to go work. You want to know that there are people in that salon that started from the bottom and are doing really, really well. You could walk into one of my salons and I can point to 10 people in one of my salons at right now that are doing extremely well financially that started with me straight from hairdressing school because that's all I do in my, in my salon is hire people straight out of school so I can... 
I can show you that I've done this. You want to find a salon that does this, that is going to put you on a path. And that salon is going to be thrilled when you take the ball and run with it and start to do really, really well much sooner. I love when my staff do that. I, I will allow my staff to progress as quickly as they, as they can, as quickly as they're able to. So you can do really, really well. You can do well over that $29,000, probably realistically in the four to five year mark. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's it. I would say go for it if you're really, really ready to make the sacrifices and make the commitment to the industry. You can start to do decently in three years if you really do everything well. And within five years, if you, if you work hard and do everything right, you should be able to make a pretty decent living. I hope that helps. And if you have any more questions, Michael Levine Hair at gmail.com or Michael Levine Hair.com. Darling, don't you go and cut your hair. Do you think it's gonna make 